Should you use H-beta data to make pretty pictures? Nah, we could do better than that. Welcome to SETI Astro. Huge thanks to a fellow astrophotographer and science nerd for letting me uh, use their data for this. All right, I have two images here, one H-beta, one H-alpha. These are both shot with an ASI 6200, uh, which will be important later. So right now these are just, just linear, and we have to do a little bit of pre-processing before we could really dive into uh, utilizing the data in here. And in the end, what we're hoping to do is come up with something called the Balmer decrement, which will actually tell us the electron temperature in the Orion Nebula. And it has to do with the fact that hotter temperatures excite the hydrogen atoms more, the electrons in the, in the shell. So you have a slight shift from most of the emission in hydrogen alpha to more of it getting emitted in hydrogen beta. And you can see that here, uh, just you know, really quickly, we're looking at the Balmer series. That's what we image when we're imaging H alpha. H alpha is uh, just from the third orbital to the second orbital. It's not actually all the way to the ground state. Those those are the the Lyman series, and then the the patient series is to the to the third, and that's all in infrared. So when we're imaging H alpha, we're actually looking at this third to second orbital transition and then when you're imaging in h beta it's actually from the fourth to the second and you can see that over here too so the the energy emitted is higher and the wavelength is shorter but conversely in order to knock that electron up to a higher energy you need more energy to do that right so so more kinetic energy in the temperature of the gas so as the gas gets hotter and hotter and hotter, more and more and more of it is going to be emitted in what we call H beta, and less and less of it will be in H alpha. And this is what this table is actually showing. At you know 5,000 Kelvin, H alpha is about three times stronger than H beta. At 10,000 Kelvin, it's starting to go down. It's only 2.8 times as strong as H beta. And then at 20,000 Kelvin, it's 2.7 times as strong as H beta. So that's, that's our goal. We want to look at least qualitatively the temperature within Orion, and if not, get a sense of the quantitative uh, temperatures in there. So let's get back to our data now. The first thing we want to do is get rid of any gradients, because gradients are just going to manifest themselves as hotter or cooler regions than, uh, that, that aren't really there. So I'm going to go ahead and use my uh, ADBE script and then be sure to you know when you're doing stuff like this we're, we're, we're trying to really just get rid of the, the gradient and not remove any signal so just be careful when you're removing gradients all right the next thing after gradient removal we want to do is remove any pedestal that may have shown up during the stacking process so I'm just going to use pixel math um, the easiest thing to do is just go to the target minus the minimum of the target. All that's going to do is shift the target to the left to the to the minimum, right? Just get, get rid of the pedestal. So I'm going to go ahead and apply that to both of them and redo the STF. All right, now we have the images shifted fully to the left and gradients removed. The other thing we have to think about is the quantum efficiency of the sensor used. So the individual was uh, imaging this with uh, one of these really fancy <laughs> ASI 6200s. But uh, it does have the, the quantum efficiencies here. So H alpha is uh, 656. That's right, just shy of the 60% the mark there. H beta is uh, 486, which is, if you look, it's right at 90. So, so we can do a just kind of a, a rough, like a two thirds ratio, right? So one is 60%, one is 90%. So we have to ensure that we reduce the brightness of the H beta by two thirds in order to account for the, the sensors just more sensitive at that wavelength. 
All right, so again, j just some easy pixel math, the target times two thirds right onto the H beta. And that's going to darken it now uh, based on the, the sensor's quantum efficiency in relation to the H alpha quantum efficiency of the sensor. Now we need to do some further normalizations because the background still is um, not aligned with each other. And that will still cause misinterpretations of what's actually there and what's not. So if you've ever done manual continuum subtraction, this kind of first part will look a little familiar. I'm gonna open up channel combination. And then for H beta, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the green and the blue. And then H alpha, I'm gonna put it in the red and create our new image. Here's our new image now. We need to do find background. I'm gonna use my uh, find background script. I'm just gonna drop it right on there and let it find the background for me. Found the background. Now we need to pull up uh, background neutralization. I'm gonna go ahead and drop that into our region of interest and neutralize the background. And you can see H alpha is just, you know, overwhelmingly bright, which it should be, right? It's, it's roughly three times brighter than H beta. The other thing we need to do is also uh, white balance it because you can see all the stars here have quite, quite the green tinge to them. So um, we're still not quite where we want to be. I'm going to go ahead and pull up color calibration. Again, we're going to use the, the background reference and we want structure detection on. We, we want to white balance it to the stars. All right, now, now we're getting somewhere. Now we have, as best to our ability, uh, calibrated our data without having to use like emission lamps or anything to actually um, get the, the sensitivities. But let's go ahead now and split our channels back up. So this is just an RGB. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do the channel split here. We can get rid of the blue, it's the same data as the green. So now the red is H alpha calibrated. And the green one here is our H beta calibrated. Now again, I just, I just did an STF on it and I'm gonna clean up the screen here a little bit. All right, the other thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is remove the stars. It's just going to make it look blotchy when, when we're done anyway. So I'm gonna go ahead and use Star Exterminator. You could use Starnet, uh, wh whatever you have at your disposal and remove the stars. And running uh, Star Exterminator, you can see it actually removed some of the core of Orion. Now there's a little, little trick to put that back into the image. So what I'm going to do is just, uh, I'm just gonna use clone stat and we'll be fast. Got to find a nice dark black area and we need a, a bigger radius here and we just want to get that back to, to kind of black all right that that's pretty good now on the star less image i'm going to just undo so we have our stars back in i just used the you know, just the normal subtract method. So now we have the, the stars here, we could just subtract them. So this is gonna be minus the stars. All right, now we remove the stars from the image, but we made sure that the, the data right down in the core of trapezium is still there. I'll, I'll keep the stars. I don't know if we'll ever use them again, but I'm going to go ahead and do the same for H beta. And if it does rip out anything of the nebula, I'm going to make sure I put it right back in. Yeah, unfortunately, there's, there is a couple really bright stellar spots there. We're just going to have to ignore those when we actually do our uh, division here. And even just doing a, a quick um, channel combination so we could see really what's, what's happening here. Areas that are whiter are going to be hotter, right? Because that means that there's more of a shift into the blue. So the signal stronger in the blue and the green, shifting it from the red to a whiter as the, the images are 
more closely aligned and then the the deep reds are going to be the, the cooler colder parts of the nebula and you know in the orion that that makes a lot of sense right in in trapezium it's going to be much hotter than this really dim surrounding gas structure well let's go ahead and actually try to get our balmer decrement now from our from our images so now let's see if we could uh use pixel math to try to get those uh those ratios out i'm gonna go h alpha calibrate it divided by h beta calibrate it now the the issue is images have to be between 0 and 1. And since we're expecting the H alpha signal to be three times stronger than the H beta, it's just going to clip to 1. So what we're going to have to do is divide the, the whole output here by something. Um, so let's divide the whole output by 10. So that way we know that 0.3 really means 3, right? So let's create a new image. And there we go. So now the brighter areas are the cooler areas and the darker areas are the hotter areas because the, the, the H alpha, if it was stronger, that means it had more of a signal and it's gonna be cooler. The, the stuff way out here, we really can't use. There's, there's really no signal there. You can see that there is some brightness along like these limbs and stuff here where the H alpha is actually, you know, stronger than the H beta. It is pretty noisy uh, going into doing all this. But down in, really down in the Orion is where the information is, is all lying. So again, the, the brighter areas are going to be the cooler regions. And then the darker areas in here are actually, are actually warmer. So I think that's, that's really cool. You can see the, the outer envelope here of Orion is, is cooler than the, the whole inner portion, right? Because the, the stars in the inner portion are blowing all this gas out and it's cooling as it's, as it's moving out and expanding out. And then, you know, really deep down, there's even this line where it's a cold, like a cold front kind of, kind of moving through um, Orion. So, what we want to do, and we can see our our decrement here is not quite right. We're we're a little high. We're in like the the point four, which would be four times, and then down here is like the the point three six. So it's just a little bit off from our our pseudo calibration. Like I said, we didn't have you know emission gas tubes that we calibrated this camera to to or anything. So let's see if we can't. Uh, get it more in line with the actual decrement and see if we can uh, try to tease out tease out what temperatures we're actually dealing with here. So I did some uh, quick curve fitting. The orange line is uh, my data roughly in the in the Orion and then the blue is the correct data that's that's from the chart and I, and I fit just a just a power trend line to to both of them so that way it can scale from one to the other and we can uh, try to get the, the actual temperatures in there in, in the Orion. So in PixInsight, there's a, a 2D plot. Now there's other, other programs that can do this kind of stuff as well. So I'm just gonna go ahead and um, just zoom in and, and take an area where we wanna see the decrement across. And I wanna try to avoid that black dot there in the middle. All right, this is good. This, this will be just a little profile here. And I wanna save the data. It's just going to save it as a CSV file. Maybe we'll do one other plot over here just, just for uh, fun. And using your favorite uh, spreadsheet-based editor here, you can, uh, you can uh, go ahead and, and do, that, do that conversion, right? I have the, the two different um, trend lines, and you can uh, scale one to the other. And you can go ahead and calculate the, the rough temperatures for the electron temperatures inside the Orion Nebula there. And this was uh, the, the second profile we drew. And you can see, uh, you know, a, a lot of it is between 6,000 and, and 8,000 Kelvin. And then the other one we drew going through more of the, the trapezium region, you can see some areas are, you know, get, getting quite getting quite hot up there, you know, over, over 10,000 Kelvin. 
up to you know 14,000 Kelvin up there uh, for, for the actual electron temperatures. A better, more visually uh, striking way to do this is to, all I did was mask out all the non-signal area and clipped it high. So that way when we generate a heat map, it's just gonna look like it's super, super cold out there. I got some crappy Python code here that's just going to uh, open the image, do the scaling from the trend line that's in our image to the correct trend line that's um, you know from, from the Balmer decrement chart, and then uh, draw a little heat map from it. And then in doing so, uh, we, we get this. Again, you have to be careful with interpreting, right? Along the outer edges where the, the signal's really weak, that's not going to be indicative of the actual temperature out there. But down deep in Orion itself, where, where the signal's very, very strong, right? That's, that's where we're actually getting the, the temperature map here. So, you know, in, in these oranger areas, we're in the, the 15,000 Kelvin range, where all those bright stars are really blowing high ultraviolet and you know that's that's really what's shaping orion then as the gas moves to the outer limbs of orion here the temperature drops off pretty steeply and the the structure i find really intriguing is this kind of cold spike right right in the middle and i don't know what causes that or or what's forming it but it's just really really interesting to even speculate where that is in relation to the 3D structure of Orion. Since it is really cold, it's very possible it is another one of these bubble-shaped arms coming towards us, right? This could be coming up towards, you know, out, out, of, out of the picture. And that's a, a cold arm nearer to us than the center core of, of Orion too, right? You gotta remember this is a, a 3D bulb-shaped structure. Um, just, just cool stuff, right? This, this is really what those H beta filters are for. Not really to, not really to draw pretty pictures, right? All, all it is is a weaker hydrogen signal and you already get a great hydrogen signal from H alpha. But what you can do with this H beta stuff is figure out at least qualitatively where the hotter and colder regions are in nebula. And then if you want to be quantitative, uh, you can go through some extra steps here and you know ensure that your data is calibrated to itself, scale it correctly to the actual Balmer decrement charts, and try to get rough estimates of the actual temperatures inside some of these inside some of these uh, nebula. And zooming in close really helps seeing where those uh, temperature differences are with within the Orion. So if you like um, doing this kind of stuff with your data, um, if you have H beta data and want a hand in um, going through these steps and trying to see if you can, you know, measure the temperatures inside some of these objects, uh, shoot me an email or hop on the Discord. I'm really active um, with the community. And then, uh, you know, if you have other ideas, if you have uh, other types of filter data or are just curious about this kind of science, uh, let me know. Please comment, like, and subscribe.